Hey again, Tyson France for Motion Revolver. I just wanted to cover a few ways that you can attempt to speed up the render of your project. Um, again, there's never one simple single answer to uh, making your project render faster. It's always going to depend completely upon your computer's uh, ability, how much RAM you have installed, uh, video cards, such things like that. Um, but there are a few things, a, a few steps that you should always take when rendering uh, a project file, no matter how intense uh, the project is. Um, number one, probably one of the most important things is when rendering a file, and I'm just going to grab one here um, from our Great Thinkers project and drop that into the render queue. Um, number one, when you have a project in the render queue, or a, comp uh, a composition, I should say, in the render queue. Uh, number one, make sure that you uh, click off of everything within the project window. Um, whatever you have previewed in this little box right here is actually taking up RAM. And uh, one little trick you could do is go up to After Effects Preferences and go to, I believe it's Previews, and um, no, it is not Previews, it is Oh, let me see here. Uh, ah, in display, disable thumbnails in project panel. Um, when you click this box, what's going to happen is when you toggle through here, this little box isn't going to update. And even though that might be a little bit annoying because you can't really see what it is, it's actually saving you RAM. It's it's not taking memory away from trying to render a preview for this little box. So that can help you save uh, there as well. Also, when you're going to render uh, a project, make sure that all of your composition windows are, are closed because if you have one of your comp windows open um, and you don't have your caps lock key on, as you're rendering the project, After Effects is actually going to try to uh, RAM preview that as well. It's it's going to scrub uh, with the playhead through through the project. So essentially, you're you're almost going to be rendering the project twice um, at at the same time, which, as you can uh, imagine, kind of kills uh, performance. So make sure all of your comp windows are closed when when rendering. Um, another good idea before hitting render is to go up to edit purge all and what this is going to do it's going to purge whatever um, is currently in your memory cache uh, whether it's pre preview renders whether it's um, image caches even your undo states uh, it's going to purge everything so keep in mind though if you do this um, any undos that you currently so 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 basically any steps that you just made editing the uh, project by purging these uh, you're not going to be able to revert back to those so make sure that you've saved the project before doing this so once I've purged all that has pretty much wiped the RAM clean and uh, I've got a clean slate to work with um, another important thing especially on a Mac uh, is to never render with any browser open any any web web browser such as safari chrome firefox no matter what it is if there's any way you could not use a web browser while rendering in after effects um don't do it because i'm not sure of the technical aspects but for some reason uh it seems that after effects does not like when you are browsing the web and rendering at the same time uh that's why it's it's always kind of nice to have uh, a laptop or an iPad or something like that to kind of work on while you're rendering um, could, because uh, the web browser, especially Safari in particular, seems to be a little bit of a ram hog and will completely kill um, any any rendering power that uh, you may be trying to get. Um, other more advanced steps that you could try to take uh, include going up to After Effects Preferences and uh, Memory and Multiprocessing. If we open that up, in here you'll see a bunch of numbers which might look a little confusing and scary at first. Um, and again, it, these settings completely depend upon your system performance. Obviously you can see uh, I currently have 32 gigs of RAM installed. Um, if I were to enable Render Multiple sa Frames Simultaneously, 
if I were to um, enable that, basically what's going to happen is After Effects is going to try to render more than one frame at a time uh, because the computer that I have is a six core Mac and it's uh, it's it's obviously hyperthreaded. So After Effects is seeing that as 12 CPUs. Um, there are settings here which you could actually uh, customize, uh, leaving a certain amount of CPUs and a certain amount of RAM for other applications, say if you wanted to work in Photoshop or another ap application while you were rendering, which I just advised you not to do, obviously. Uh, it, it's always better if you're working with intense renders just to leave After Effects alone and let it do its thing and go go do something else for, for um, a while. So this is something you may wanna Google and find out more about because um, I've played with settings with my, my own uh, uh, computer and I, I think I have it customized pretty well for uh, what I have. Um, I've gotten some pretty fast render times doing this. This isn't always th th like uh, the best solution depending on the project as well. Um, if you're rendering like say a frame sequence, you know, rendering multiple frames simultaneously might be a good idea. However, if you've got a really, really intensive project with a lot of effects going on, a lot of 3D layers, this might not be the best option. You actually might get a longer render by checking this box here. So again, it's all trial and error, but this is another option you could explore. Um, now, project specific, uh, things that you can do to increase uh, or decrease render time, I should say, um, and, in, and, and increase performance. Say for example, um, you're working with one of our After Effects projects and um, you're trying to render the full HD 1080 project or uh, uh, resolution composition. If you're not going to be broadcasting this video over uh, the airwaves, like if it's not going to go to TV, if you're only going to be playing this on a website or the web, you may want to consider rendering at a lower resolution. And um, again, obviously HD video looks awesome on the web, so HD 720 would be one option. But another option you have is to render the HD 1080 comp at half resolution by going here to your render settings. If you change this to half resolution, this is gonna create a 960 by 540 file. Now, that's not technically HD, um, so if you were gonna try to play a 960 by 540 frame, uh, or uh, video full frame on a TV monitor, you're going to have a little bit of quality loss there, but the render time and the file size differences are going to actually be pretty good. Um, say, for example, you have a render that's taking you about 10 hours. By setting this to half resolution, that doesn't actually mean it's going to take five hours. That might actually mean it might only take two hours. You don't actually cut the time in half. Um, you actually might cut it more than in, in a half as far as the render time goes. So the advantages there as far as time goes uh, might be worth it. Um, just keep in mind that you may be taking a, a quality hit there. Um, as far as file size goes, I get a lot of uh, questions about why is my, my, my file 12 gigs? Uh, why is it so large? Uh, QuickTime is, can't, can't play it because it's too big. Well, chances are you probably rendered the animation with a uh, lossless uh, compression, which means that you're going to be producing a very high quality file, but the file size is going to be massive and um, likely choke whatever computer you're trying to play it on, especially if you just rendered a full HD 1080 file. Um, options that you have would be clicking on this lossless uh, option here and um, going to... Uh, let's see, I haven't done this in a while. Oh, go to format options and then change this from the animation codec to something like photo JPEG. Um, this is a pretty universal codec and should play on any machine. If we choose that option and then set the quality say to 85, that's a pretty good option usually. Um, the file size is gonna go down a lot, but you're not gonna really notice too big of a quality hit. Uh, so that's one thing you could do there to lower uh, the file size. Um, also, as far as the audio goes, sometimes audio can be fairly large. 
You don't always have to render 48K audio. You could usually get by at least on 44.1. Sometimes if, if audio quality isn't a huge issue, you can render uh, 32 kilohertz as well. Um, but I usually leave the 16-bit and the stereo alone because if you try to render 8-bit audio, sometimes the results aren't uh, all that favorable. But anyway, those are some options you can try to reduce the render times of your project. Unfortunately, like I said, there isn't one single answer or um, any perfect solution for um, everybody out there. It's really just a matter of trial and error. But um, hopefully some of these steps might help you in uh, achieving faster render times and uh, lower file sizes. But uh, again, I'm Tyson France for Motion Revolver, and thanks for watching.